Hi, everybody, and welcome to the One Conference. We hope you enjoyed our new song. We had a ton of fun making that. I am Dr. Jeremy Pettis. I'm joined by my good friends and colleagues, uh, Dr. Leslie Island, Dr. Steve Edelman. We're all endocrinologists, and guess what? We all have type 1 diabetes. So we're super excited to be here um, doing this talk. Just wanted to let you know that if at any point during this talk or during the conference you're thinking, gosh, I wish I'd learned a little bit more about that, please go to our website. You can click on watch and then the video vault. And chances are we've done a whole talk on whatever you're wondering about. We have thousands of hours of free video content there for you to check out. If you're actually watching right now via the conference, we have an on-demand section that has a whole you know, other host of topics that you can look at at your leisure whenever you want. Um, so that's that. So for this talk, what we wanted to do is kind of like, you know, we talked about tips that we really wanted you guys to know. And it's probably things that you can't read or find in a textbook or your provider might not even know about. So we're going to take turns with tips um, and share them with you. So let's get into it. So uh, tip number one, I'm going to start it. We're going to kind of rotate around. You know, I just wanted to start with the basics because we're going to get into some kind of, you know, some more touchy feely things, etc. So some of the basics. So starting with, um, please get a continuous glucose monitor. If you have type one, it's really the only way to know what your blood sugars are, control your blood sugars. I honestly don't know how to manage type one without it um, for myself or for my patients. And then Steve's gonna do a whole section on how to set your alarms right. So we're gonna come back to one of his tips for that. Mm -hmm. Strongly represent or recommend getting one of these new hybrid closed loop pumps. Um, you know, again, these are systems that are just doing things that you can't do with shots. Totally understand if you're doing really well on, on shots, by all means, continue doing that. Uh, but these, these new pumps are, are really, really fantastic. So if you haven't you know, thought about it or talked to your provider about it, it's, it's really time to think about coming around to a pump. Um, I didn't used to push pumps a couple years ago, but now definitely am with all the, the things that they can do. Yeah, mainly because they now communicate with the CGM mm -hmm. and they automatically give you a little bit of insulin on the way up and less on the way down. So while you're doing your daily activities and it, it can help improve your control without you putting any extra effort in. For sure. Um, and then this sounds like a kind of like a duh thing, but it says pre bolus for every meal or snack. And duh. nighttime snacks are not great. <laughs> yeah. But is this really is really a tip. Honestly, probably <laughs> the most important thing. Absolutely. Because the um, the main pattern I see in people with with type one diabetes is they don't bolus for their meal or snack or enough. They go high, yep. then they have to react and take a big what we call rage bolus, and then they go low. And they have to eat everything in the fridge, myself included sometimes, and you kind of you know, rebound. And people get in the mindset of, well, I don't want to go low, so I'm not going to bolus for this, this food. But that actually ends up you know, creating the problem. So every time you eat, every time, whether it's a snack or a meal, take a bolus for that. And ideally, 10, 15 minutes before you eat, at least, to give that insulin some time to work. And if you honestly are just getting something, some kind of insulin in before each meal or snack, you're going to be getting like 90% of the way there. And you know, Jeremy, that's one of the greatest benefits of a pump, whether it's hooked up to a CGM or not, because you, the ease of giving small, accurate boluses anytime you want. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to walk around with shirts and blouses with little blood spots from, from giving the injections. Oh, yeah, I have plenty of those. I, I use that in my debate. With <laughs> the I think nope. a lot of people are worried that they, you know, don't know exactly what they're going to eat. And so they don't want to overdo it with that pre bolus. But I, if you're on a pump, I think it's a lot easier to put in, you know, half or two thirds of like what you are definitely going to eat and put the pre bolus in and then do sort of a completion bolus later if you do totally. end up eating more. Just having something on board when you eat something. makes a huge, huge difference. Like if you don't, if you go away from this talk without learning anything, that's honestly like one of the most important things. So really quick, I just mentioned get glucagon. Make sure that you have that on hand. There's a lot of new developments in, in glucagon. There's a nasal uh, version called Baxemi. Um, there's a, a, a Givo Kypo pen that's already pre-mixed. These things are stable now for two years, so you don't have to you know, mix them or anything. So there's been actually some developments in glucagon, so just make sure that's on your list. Considering a Frezza, I just have on there because I don't think we actually talk more about it in detail later. It's an inhaled insulin that works really, really quickly. If you haven't heard about it, again, we've done tons of talks on this. Um, it's a nice addition to whether you're on shots, on a pump, hybrid closed loop system. It's a really nice thing to kind of think about. Yep. So I just have, um, my last thing is eat low carb-ish. I think this is another thing that like I'm talking about in all of our type ones. Um, and what does low carb-ish mean? That just means, you know, if you can 30 grams of carbs or less per meal, like 
you know, like you'll be doing really well if you can adhere to that. I'm not saying zero carbs or, you know, ketone, but the less carbs you eat, the better you're going to ultimately do. And I, I have a slide to show that like eating low carb doesn't mean you have to necessarily suffer. You know, Brent, like I have a, a double double from in and out here. I love it. That's uh, protein style. Um, it's delicious. So I always say that low carb doesn't mean like, you know, I have to mean like low flavor or anti deliciousness. You can still eat some really good <laughs> things. Anti deliciousness. <laughs> yeah. okay. I, um, I love that. Bacon and eggs. I love <clears throat> bacon and eggs. You know, for breakfast, I can eat this all day long. Um, you know, just chicken with vegetables. Um, cauliflower rice. I actually like cauliflower rice because let's be honest, like, like for me, rice is just a mechanism to, to deliver some sauce to my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I can do the same thing with sure. cauliflower. That's true. Um, and then guess what? There's low carb alcohols. Like, you know, um, hard alcohol actually has zero carbs in it. So I'm not saying go out and pound hard alcohol. Um, but there are ways that you can make low carb work in kind of your diet and not have to really suffer. And even starting with like one or two meals a day out of the three meals you may eat or like four or five out of seven days a week trying it. Like you will absolutely see the difference on like the lower carb days versus the high carb days yeah. on your CGM. And I always say, if you're all over the place, like your blood sugars are just going wild, or maybe you went on vacation, you're trying to get back on track, starting with you going low carb for a yeah. couple of days, resetting things can really, really help. All right, all right so is, you're up. Tip yeah, two. this is my tip. Um, enjoy the wins and don't dwell on the losses. So I think um, Jeremy has a graph coming up where days like this can be, um, they can really get in your head because you have to pay so much attention to your diabetes on on days like this, where you're going from low to high and low to high and you're having all these alarms. And if you are going to reflect on how your diabetes is doing over the last week or so, a day like that is really going to stick with you and you're going to feel like you're not doing that well. Um, and I think it's because we forget about those days when we're 100% in range, 95% in range, and you have no alarms and it just goes out of your brain. Like you, that was, that was a good thing. You didn't have to focus on diabetes that day, but like you don't really give yourself credit for those days. You just yeah. remember those, those crappy days. I was just going to say, this was me, you know, the <laughs> other day. <laughs> so <laughs> snapshot. Yeah. Yeah. So Leslie said, you have an example of like a bad blood sugar day. I'm like, yes, you know, this was me just like a week ago. And so the point is like, you know, I know a lot about diabetes. I'm a, a doctor for Christ's sakes. And this happens to me. I went high, I went low. I was just like losing my mind. And this isn't that atypical. I didn't have to think like, oh yeah, seven years ago I had a bad day. <laughs> this was like last week. So it's, if you're struggling, like it's, it's common even for us. So there are features like with uh, Dexcom Clarity where you can set um, a time and range goal, which I think is really nice because rarely do we get just like immediate positive feedback when you have diabetes. And so you can set a goal and then you get a push notification like the next morning to say like, hey, great job. Last 24 hours, you reached your goal. And then you can get sort of like a weekly um, summary wrap up push to you if you want. And so it's a really nice way. Like you can see on Friday, um, you know, you weren't doing great. You were only 13% in range, but then this the next three this days, wasn't me. no, this wasn't you. Okay. I'm just saying like theoretical, <laughs> yeah. theoretical you, you know, Friday was a bad day, 13. but then yeah. you can, then you can say, look, like over the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like I did, I did great, you know? Yeah. And so it kind of, it put things, it puts things into like a more positive perspective. Yeah. I think. And when you, I love when I get that little text, you reach your goal and like, I know, a little, I feel like so good. fist pump or yeah. a little like moment of celebration is, is for sure needed. Do they yeah. send any funny messages like when people really mess up? No, no. there's no, there's, you, just you, don't, you just don't, you just do not get I, an alert. me texting you like, hey, get it together. <laughs> there's yeah. just an absence of alert. <laughs> yeah. Get your um, blank together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have some wins to celebrate. Celebrating the wins. Yeah. So I, um, this is a picture of me feeding my son a <laughs> s'more like several years ago. And this is when I first started using a Frezza. And so I took, um, I dosed insulin with a Frezza and ate my s'more and I did Amazing. I'm a CGM graph. And I think I even texted Jeremy. I was like, so, so proud that I like ate <laughs> more successfully with not a lot of blood sugar issues. Um, so nailing bolus is a great win. Um, pulling off exercise, not going low, not going high, um, is fun. Having an amazing A1C at your doctor's office, being able to like put that lab value up on the fridge, yeah, and I think having a good eye exam. You know, an amazing A1C doesn't necessarily mean less than seven. You no, know, it just maybe means maybe eleven to nine, and improved know, trend. Yeah, yeah, you're happy about it. Celebrate. That. You're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay, sorry. Oh no. Um, I exam went, well. went well, your diverse rate, mine is February 12th, and um, oh, Justin funny. Gregory's diverse rate is actually oh, also on February 12th, oh, so wow. we always text each other, he's a pediatric endocrinologist at Vanderbilt, we always text each other and wish each other a uh, happy diverse rate. Uh, having a no-hitter, having a 100% uh, in-range day is 
really impressive. It's hard to do. You should celebrate. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you correct a crazy high without having a subsequent low, it's yeah. also a win. It's yeah, pretty rare to come in for that kind of like smooth landing. Yeah. It is a win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much of a win. Yeah. You know, the diversity, by the way, the day that you were diagnosed, you know, which, you know, I think it's a positive spin on it to kind of celebrate it. All right, it Steve. Um, this is your first tip. Setting your, setting your CGM alarms right. Yeah. So this okay. is a graph. Yeah. yeah. This is... I want to make sure we keep going because yeah. this time's going to go by fast. Well, you can see this person's not doing great. If you click it one more time in the upper corner, their upper alert is set at 390. And um, that really defeats the whole purpose. And I understand there's a thing called alarm fatigue. But I'm going to give you some suggestions and you can take any iteration of it as you like. So if we go to the next slide and we can build it up, but I would suggest that you lower your upper limit. So most people get set up eventually, you know, you're low at 70 or 80, you're upper at 180. And it dawned on me one day when I was in fierce competition with Pettis over here on time and range, that if I lowered my upper alert to 150, at least when it goes off, that I could do something before it gets to 180. And you have to change your mindset. When I was telling Leslie about this, she almost fell off the couch. Uh, and she said, what? That's going to drive me crazy. Um, and this is what I would suggest. So I did 150. But if you're starting off at 250, you know, you don't have to do it all at one time. But I can tell you that it'll definitely improve your diabetes control. So you should also think about changing the sound. Because the sound that comes from the factory on these alerts, they're, they're pretty annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you change it to a gentler, like a doorbell sound, I like the one that says nerd alert. It's just not as obnoxious. You have like a cash register one too, right? Well, that's called the nerd alert, okay. believe it or not. <laughs> um, and that way, when it hits 150, I look at the trend arrow and I say, okay, well, um, my system may not take care of this rise in blood sugar. I might give myself a little correction. If it's straight across, I might not do anything. And on the way down, obviously, I'm not going to do anything either. But if it's on the way up, uh, then you could do something before, whether it's take a little bolus on your pump or take a little hit of a Frezza. And if you go to the next slide, for you folks that are freaking out about alarm fatigue, uh, at least on the Dexcom, you can have two periods of the day where you set your alarms at different levels. So you can see during the day it's 150, at night it's 180. Um, and so it's it's just important. And I, I cannot tell you how many of my patients have come back and thanked me for that suggestion because it raised their time and range at least 10% just by changing the alerts alarm. So this is a picture of uh, the different sounds. So I wanted to warn you that <laughs> you don't want to do this one. And maybe we can, Eric, can you play that for us? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even know why that's an option. That's really horrible. Yeah, yeah. But you see there's others. Yeah. And that and that's it. So that is my important tip. Lower your upper limit, change your mindset to say, okay, this is gonna be when mine goes off, you can ask Jeremy. I go, yes. <laughs> Versus in the old days, I go, damn it. And it's an opportunity now to yeah. intervene before you go. Yeah, high. your metrics yeah. will all improve. Yeah. This one's quick, but it's an important one. Get a friend with type 1 diabetes. Um, I got a friend. His name's Steve Edelman. He's sitting right here. Here's Steve and I, you know, a while ago, we were on a plane, apparently the first and only people on a plane, having a good time. Um, but, you know, the point here is that if you have somebody with type 1 diabetes in your life, they're just going to get it. And when I call Steve and, and talk about diabetes, it's not like, help me with my carb ratio. It's just me being mad or frustrated. And somebody that just understands and can empathize um, Leslie's also my friend um, who has type 1. Um, so it, it's just nice. And if you don't have an actual physical friend, an online community, something like that. Another th tip I like to give is if you're ever anywhere and you see somebody wearing a pump, just say hi to them. You know, just say, I like your pump, you know, and then trust me, that usually goes pretty well. And you can have a conversation. In, just, in, insulin pump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's me and Steve just the other Tuesday having, you know, some Twinkies and our, you know, our regular Tuesday gear. This was us <laughs> on New Year's Eve a couple years ago, I think. Here's us in Hawaii with matching shirts, of course. And I wasn't actually there for this See, one. He abused the privilege <laughs> of being shown in this picture. Um, I don't know. I don't know the backstory of this. Steve just sent me this the other day with no caption and no, um, just true. wanted to show this up there. <laughs> so, uh, so, so just enjoying the community. Like there's such a camaraderie. That's part of the reason we're doing this one conference and this talk is that there's, there's, there's something really powerful to be gained about having, you know, other people in your life with type one.
All right, so my next tip is to get good information. So I broke this down to identify what your goals are, choose a source that meets those goals, and then cut out the ones that don't. So um, if your question is that you have, a, you're gonna be a bridesmaid soon, and how are you gonna fit your pump in your dress? That may be a good question to pose to like a Facebook group, um, because they may know more about what is out there uh, to hide your pump under your clothing than your endocrinologist might, right? So. That's fine to use that group, but then don't really pay attention to the comments if someone's trying to tell you that you, you know, should be doing something else with your diabetes management. That's just not an appropriate, um, like, avenue to get medical advice. Fashion advice, yes. Yeah. Um, if your warranty is up and you're trying to figure out the pros and cons of the current hybrid closed loop systems, then there are more, you know, respected resources like JDRF, TCOYD, Diatribe, the American Diabetes Association. Those would be better websites to go to if you're seeking more technical uh, advice about your diabetes management. Especially TCOID. Especially TCOID. Yeah, especially. <laughs> yep. All right. Your basal rate is probably one of the most important things you should set before you even start mucking around with insulin to carb ratio, insulin sensitivity factor. So you can see on the next slide, there's a whole list of things how to test your basal. And you can build that out, Jeremy. But basically, without even reading that, you can look right at me and, and this is it. Try to go, try to have an early dinner Go to bed between 120 and 180 with a horizontal trend arrow. Look at your blood sugar when you go to bed. See what it is when you wake up. And obviously, you're not eating or exercising or drinking at night and drinking things with calories. And it really should be no more than 30 higher or 30 lower. And uh, sometimes you may need to test this again. And it's really important to get this straight because everything else depends on your basal. So you can see on the next slide is a little quiz. You can see on the left-hand side of the download, that's midnight, and you can see the mean glucose for this patient. They have a lot, they have a lot of variability. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's actually creeping up a little bit. So if you go to the next uh, screen, this is when this person had an early dinner, went to bed, and you can see they went from like 150, 150 to 105. So that's, that's a pretty good drop. And it turns out that after repeating this a few times, the trend still happened. They dropped slowly overnight. So we reduced the basal and then everything else builds on that. So that's really important. And the next slide is someone who's on a hybrid closed loop. And you can see this is the classic download. It's, you see how the average mm -hmm. just comes down. We got to think a name for that. Just come in for the landing. Mm -hmm. Look, look how much <clears throat> the standard deviation tightens and the average comes down and these devices are just Amazing. Now, you can still mess up on these hybrid closed loop systems. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. see this on the next slide. This is a patient who is on way too much basal. And every time you see one of those arrows, uh, that means the pump suspended, meaning that it, it predicted that they were going to get too low. And when you have this many suspensions, you know, during the day and night, your basal is too high. Mm -hmm. So this is an important tip. Yeah. So hybrid closed loop systems don't take care of everything. You still have to get your basal you rate. You still need right. endocrinologists. Yeah, yeah. Thank God we still have <laughs> a job. Now, okay, if you're thinking, gosh, this all sounds like really complicated. Uh, I don't know if I can handle all this. Well, guess what? Tip number seven is here for you. <laughs> and sometimes you just got to say F it, meaning that sometimes things go. Can you just say it? <laughs> no, because Eric, we learned the other day, cannot bleep things out. Um, so um, sometimes like things go wrong, like the slide I showed of my blood sugars all over the place. And sometimes you just got to say F it and move on. You know, it really is, you know, a marathon, not a sprint. So I love acai bowls. I don't even know what acai is. It's a Sugar. purple goop <laughs> um, that comes with granola on it and fruit. It's got three zillion carbs in it. Every once in a while, I splurge. And I know my blood sugars are not going to do well, but I go for it. I love pizza. I love beer. Probably like two very difficult things to, to eat and drink with, with diabetes. But guess what? I do it every once in a while. Uh, for sure, the beer more than every once in a while. Um, and um, I deal with it. So this is me the other day. My blood sugar's 252. I'm upset. But guess what? Tip number seven, I said F it, and I had a donut. And I <laughs> just, you know, sometimes you got to do that. No, I'm not saying every day, um, but we just have to realize that there's going to be imperfections. But if you're meeting your goals, try to stay positive and just realize that, you know, crap happens sometimes. You watch our donut challenge, how to control your blood sugars after eating three donuts. And real quick, there's two ways to say F it. You can be a pre-planned F it. I'm going to eat whatever the hell this weekend I, I want this weekend because screw it um, and kind of plan ahead for the weekend. And then there's the not planned effort where, gosh, my blood sugar just shot up to 280. I have no idea. But you know what? F it. I'm going to regroup and I'm going to try again tomorrow. You just got to let it go sometimes. I love the two categories. Yeah, that's pre-planned like or not planned <laughs> ways of saying effort. So that's it. Tip number eight. 
Yeah. So, I mean, we could do a whole separate talk on exercise and you have talks on exercise in the video vault, but I think it's really just important because this is also, you know, exercise and diabetes is a marathon, not a sprint. You need to find something that you enjoy, um, that you want to do lifelong, right? This is not just a, a short course. Um, what do you like to do? I like to cycle. Mm -hmm. Thank you for putting yeah. my photo up. <laughs> yeah, there. you're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's good on my knees and I can get on the Peloton or I can go outside. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> and so I think there's absolutely ways to avoid hypoglycemia and Steve and Jeremy go into it more um, in the video that they did on exercise that's in the vault. Um, there's certain strategies involving the timing of exercise, timing of your last bolus, adjustments that you can make. Um, if you're on a pump an hour or so prior to exercise, there's, there's, did you know there are two different type one diabetes Peloton groups? I don't I know the difference that. between them, but there's well, both. I definitely want to be in the second one. I'm in Hashtag both. I'm just T1D covering, sounds boring I'm covering my bases. Type one diabetes. I know, <laughs> I know. I want, I want with both. But, um, so there's a lot of ways to get engaged. And, um, well, I think your, your point, your overall point is important. Be prepared and get educated on how to adjust your diabetes before, during, and after. Yeah. Cause exercise is fantastic, but it's probably the most difficult thing yeah, to handle yeah, with your yeah. blood sugars going low, going high afterwards. And in this video, you know, we, I think we did a good job of showing, you know, how to handle that. Um, so check that one out on the video vault for sure. All right, Steve. Okay. Tip number nine, respond this, to trend arrows. I got the arrows. two most, three most important tips. Okay. You've got to respond to your trend arrows. I disagree, arrows. but. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the effort rule. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What you see on this slide is a study that Jeremy and I did with several hundred successful CGM users. And we asked them. We said, listen, what, what's the most important thing about CGM to you? And they said, the real-time trend arrows, then, of course, the alerts and alarms. And very few of them said, well, looking at the data in, in retrospect. Now, this next slide is amazing. We gave these patients scenarios. Your blood sugar is 220. How much insulin are you going to take to get down to 120? And uh, the only difference between these two slides is the trend arrows, as you can see. That one on the left, the trend arrows, horizontal, stable. On the right two arrows up, three uh, milligrams per deciliter or more per minute. And then you can see the amount of insulin they gave on average for this group. You can see that it was three units, which, which makes a correction factor of like one to 30, mm -hmm. brings them down to 100 points, or 6.8 units, just based on the trend gel. Think about the old days with your glucose meter. You got the same number, you gave the same dose every mm -hmm. single time. On the next slide, and you can build out those circles, Jeremy, that you can see that on if the trend arrow straight across, we already talked about the three, two arrows up, 6.8. Two arrows down, the mean dose was 1.5. But many of the folks responded, I'm not going to give any until I see the horizontal, the, air, the arrow slow down and, and come across. And so, but the mean dose was 1.5. So could you imagine? from zero to 6.8, just based on the trend arrow. Mm -hmm. So then Jeremy and I uh, came up with an idea. How do you tell people uh, how to correct when, the, when their trend arrow is going up? Now, this was in the day before hybrid closed loop. And uh, this is a whole matter of discussion. But for example, if your blood sugar is 150 and you have a trend arrow straight up, you add 75 to that and you correct for that number. Now, on a hybrid closed loop, if if you look like you're not too far from the goal, you might just leave it alone and let the modulating basal rate take care of it. But if you think that you're, it's, it won't be able to really bring you down, then you can correct. And I think the bottom line is when the trend arrow is going up, give yourself more mm -hmm. than usual. And on the way down, you give yourself less or you wait until the, the trend arrow over time becomes horizontal. And if it levels off at about 250 or 200, you know you might need another correction. Mm -hmm. If it levels off at 130, you're golden. So, you know, the bottom line is no matter what kind of system you're on, you got to pay attention to these trend arrows. Super important. All right. And then, you know, you said uh, this is an important thing that you were actually been following your yeah. blood sugars over the last 90 days. Yeah. And yeah. This was <laughs> the day before we taped this yesterday, I reached 90% over 90 days. That's amazing. Yeah. And I've already been knocked off the top of the hill because <laughs> yesterday was a crazy day. So, you know, whatever level you're shooting for, anything over 70 is good. 80 is amazing. 90 is like golden. And I think, you know, you're not bragging. This is something you've been working on very, very, you know, hard. You've, you've had type one for a long time, you know, dealt with, you know, urine testing and a single shot when you're diagnosed to this. So the point I think you're making is that this can be done and you have these these things that you you did to get it. You set your alerts correctly. You responded to the trend arrows like you talked about. You got your basal dose right. And you didn't really suffer 
in terms of other lifestyle changes. Yeah, you hang around me a lot. You didn't see me not eating donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, a point here is that it can be done, yeah, yeah. you know, and we're not saying everyone has to be at 90%. I'm just think, you know, we're all very proud of you, Steve, for yeah. hitting, I mean, I'm not at 90%. It, I don't know what you no, are. But, yeah. Well, I, 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 I won't be able to maintain that, but you know what? At least I did it. Yeah. Well, congrats. Thank so you. So you're it's at 89 now, so you, you know, I did celebrate. Cool. Yeah. I had a Would thing of seized candy. Yeah. Oh, okay. It won. It was really upsetting. It won <laughs> seized candy. It's dumb. That's not enough. All right, so last tip, Leslie. Oh, multiple ways to manage type 1 diabetes successfully. Uh, so these pictures, I think there are at least like eight type 1 endocrinologists uh, within these three pictures. Are we counting Aaron Kowalski? Yeah. So we'll, <laughs> we'll grandfather him in. Um, <laughs> and I think from what I remember people being on most recently, there's like six different ways these eight of us are choosing to manage our blood sugars, which is great. Some mm -hmm. people are on control IQ. Some people are on... Omnipod loop. Some people are trying to get on Omnipod 5. Some people are on shots and CGM. Um, and so I just think that's so interesting that like this many, you know, no, this, this number of type 1 endos is, is all doing totally. something yeah. different. You got to do what works for you. There's, yeah. There's many ways to skin a cat, which I don't understand that, that phrase or who's skinning cats, but that's awesome. I, you know, I, I like those pictures. So. Yeah. And so I, these are just other examples in the video vault about you using um, different bolus strategies to eat a bunch of pizza, eat a bunch of donuts. Like there are multiple ways to to do that successfully and stay, stay in range. Yeah. I, I feel like the alcohol talk was like a different uh, target, but I just I wanted to yeah, do that. Yeah, it was to so. try to keep your shirt on, which yeah. apparently I lost. Still can't yeah. find my shirt. <laughs> Well, so, you know, we're concluding with saying, and always you just remember, you're going to be okay. You know, this is a, there's a lot going on, you know, that we just talked about. But having type 1 diabetes doesn't mean you're unhealthy. In fact, you know, we know now that life expectancy with type 1 diabetes can actually be longer than people without diabetes as long as you keep your blood sugar reasonably controlled. So, you know, I think we need to get rid of the doom and gloom, celebrate some of the fun, you know, the community and all, the, you know, these tips hopefully are helpful to leave you saying... Possibly, the type 1 diabetes is the best thing that ever happened to me, and the quote, hopefully, from you. And I know that's a little cheesy, but we do say that from time to time. It's one of these great things that happened to we're us. Gonna, we're going to talk 1. about that later today. Yeah. 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 Um, so thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Rapid fire tips. Thanks, Leslie and Steve, for doing that with me. And uh, it was awesome. see you soon. <laughs>